What is up guys, Rick Kak is here, and today we are going to be taking the new exotic hand cannon, to Destiny 2 at least, the Thorn, the Weapon of Sorrow, into the Heart of Sorrow with the Last Wish Raid, and seeing how it performs on every single encounter. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, you want some baller headphones, get a discount code, link in the description. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, the Thorn. This is a really interesting weapon, obviously returning from its glory days in Destiny 1 to Destiny 2 with a unique twist. Now, a quick look at this weapon, Firstly, we have the exotic perk Mark of the Devourer. Rounds pierce targets and deal damage over time. Kills with this weapon leave behind remnants. So just the fact that this hand cannon deals some damage over time means that over a longer period of time, it's likely just going to out DPS most other normal hand cannons that are just delivering their damage straight and have no damage over time effect but the remnants become really insane with the other unique perk, Soul Devourer. Absorbing a remnant strengthens Mark of the Devourer and partially refills the magazine. The Thorn, when it gets a remnant, so you kill an enemy, it drops a little green sphere, and you get that sphere, and then the weapon will actually start to glow, and it will do considerably more damage. In PvP, it goes from a three headshot kill to a two headshot kill. So that means the Thorn, with Soul Devourer active, is out DPSing other hand cannons by a mile. Is it DPSing enough though to be killing raid bosses? Well, let's see, starting here with Kali and the first encounter of Last Wish. So you can actually kind of speed run kill Kali by standing next to one of the plates, like all six people standing next to one of the plates, she appears at that plate because if you're standing normally six people each on one plate she's gonna pester certain people but if you only stand on one plate she's 100% gonna appear there and then you DPS the crap out of her you stand next to the plate to the immediate right or left she appears there all six people are there you DPS the crap out of her you do that a couple of times bouncing back and forth and then you have one phase in the middle to DPS her again you will not have the chance to open the doors but we didn't do that. We did it the old fashioned way because if we need to get the effect of Soul Devourer, we need to be killing ads. And unfortunately, just there are a lot of ads in this encounter, but you're going to be killing some stuff and you then have to run to the middle of the map in order to get all six people together for a DPS phase. So you really have the tail end, maybe you have three seconds of Soul Devourer left and it really isn't that effective. However, if you are just normally DPSing her, which of course you can see us doing, we are aided by some melting points via a Titan to deal more damage, and of course, a Well of Radiance. Every DPS phase involves a Well of Radiance. But once she actually summons her octagonal weapon and we all have to hide in the doors, enemies spawn in the middle. This is key. So we can pretty much all kill one of those Cursed Thralls in the very middle, or Cursed Scions, and then all six of us can have Soul Devourer active for a good 10 seconds of pure damage on Kali. And as you can see in the background gameplay, that's really what we tried to achieve. And when we do, one damage phase of, of course, three sessions of going into the doors is able to result in half of her health gone with a primary weapon. Frankly, I'm pretty impressed by that. When this raid first came out, that was pretty much average for using the best possible weapons, sleeper, simulant, all of that stuff. The Thorn, a lowly hand cannon, is doing half of her health. Again, I'm very impressed by that. Now, we could have done a little bit better in certain categories. It is kind of hard because we had two Warlocks, both using Well of Radiance uh, to keep it active, but even then, during certain portions of the damage phase, we would have to have someone tether the adds in the middle in order to produce enough orbs so we'd always have Well of Radiance. This means that if you kill one to get the Soul Devourer active, it kills all of them, so we aren't able to spread around that buff as much as we'd like, but we are able to almost kill her in two damage phases and a third one to finish her off almost instantly. If we would have done things maybe a little bit differently, uh, you have to actually be a little bit close to her because it is kind of hard to get headshots on Kali. She's kind of wriggling around and spazzing out all the time. But if we were able to hit it, you know, a few more headshots, do things a tiny bit better, I think it's a pretty easy two phase, which I'm pretty impressed by for a primary. 
So for the Kali encounter, I'm gonna give the Thorn a 6 out of 10. Definitely above average, but you're probably gonna wanna use a different weapon for DPS. All right, now moving on from there to the second raid encounter, Shiro Chi. This is all about damage. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to do a certain amount of damage because she's basically broken up into six different sections, six different damage phases, and each one takes away, well, one sixth of her health. So if you aren't able to achieve that amount of damage, you are just gonna lose. Like you have to be able to take away that first chunk and then take away the second chunk, which is exactly the same amount of damage and so on. So were we able to do that with just a lowly primary? Well, actually, yes we were. Without even extending it, we were able to achieve the necessary damage. Somewhat surprisingly, without the help of Soul Devourer because even though there's a ton of ads in this encounter, like they are everywhere, and you're gonna have the upgraded Mark of the Devourer for 99% of this encounter, the 1% you don't have it is for the actual damage phase of Shirochi, because the way it works is that there's a bunch of Scions, you kill them, and then you have to hop on the crystals. And just the time it takes to hop onto the crystals, shoot each other, it takes a couple of seconds for it to activate, then you have to all run to the middle, and someone plants a Well of Radiance, you have to stand inside the Well of Radiance. You might have a couple of seconds of the Soul Devourer active, but you know, it's really not much. Like, you, you literally just have a couple of seconds, unfortunately. So, it's mostly just the raw damage output of this gun. And because of that, although we were able to I mean, DPS her enough, and DPS her enough again, it was a little inconsistent. And we did find ourselves dying a few times in this encounter, just we weren't able to get exactly enough DPS. Someone would be lagging behind. You know, you get into weird angles and she does still freak out like, uh, like Callie and she can move her head. And if she moves her head backwards and you miss a couple shots, your DPS tanks. Like we're just barely able to achieve the necessary DPS. So what we did is just grabbed the Eye of Riven thing and Shooter and it extends the damage phase duration. And once we were doing this, easy peasy. Like then it's very, very easy to get the recommended damage. So Thorn is 100% viable for this encounter. Definitely, you know, not recommended. Something like a shotgun is gonna do a lot more damage, but if you want a Thorner, you definitely can. And of course, for the rest of Encounter just DPSing adds, the Thorn is a pretty darn decent hand cannon. Like, it's gonna one-shot most enemies, and like we were saying, there's a ton of adds, you always have that extra damage bonus, so you can kill knights and so on pretty darn quickly. So, for the Shiro Chi Encounter, I'm gonna give the Thorn an 8 out of 10. Very, very good here, especially because the Escalation Shotgun still does so much damage, and you can use that in tandem with the Thorn, and that's capable of reaching the damage threshold by itself, so honestly, great weapon. Alright, now moving on from there, we have Morgoth, aka Swolgroth. Are we able to DPS this guy? And this this is a big DPS check, unlike Shiro Chi, unlike Kali, it's kind of all or nothing. Yes, you can definitely extend the duration, but no one does that. We want to see if we could one phase Morgoth with the strategy of just planting a Well of Radiance kind of behind him and just going to town. This is what everyone does now, stuff like Escalation Shotguns, even after uh, the nerf, the Legend of Acreus, Wardcliffs, Thunderlords, you can DPS the crap out of him with pretty much anything. Can you do it with the Thorn? Well, we gave it the good old college try. Now the thing is, for most of this encounter, again, you're just fighting normal adds, and the Thorn is acting like just a good overall primary weapon. You may even want to run this. Like, it's a legitimately a fantastic weapon, just overall, especially because there's so many adds, you're always getting that bonus. And then DPS uh, Morgoth with your secondary and your power weapon. But, of course, we're trying to do the challenge, so the idea was leave some of the Scions alive near the very top part of the map, and then as you're coming all together behind him for a damage phase, quickly kill one, grab that bonus, and then get to the damage phase area as quickly as possible. And we did that, and you know, we did damage him with a good five or more seconds of that bonus up, but it just wasn't enough. As you can see, we were able to do half damage pretty consistently. We actually tried it a few times. And so, you know, half its damage taking away with just a primary is still very impressive. But 
not enough, not enough to really warrant actually utilizing this weapon in any sort of damage capacity because, of course, so many other weapons out DPS it. So, Curiosity has now been abided. Yeah, eh, it's not that good against Morgoth. Now, if you really did want to use it, you could save an Eye of Riven and extend the encounter, but you could also just use other weapons too. So for the Morgoth encounter, another 6 out of 10. It's above average again for a primary, but you want to use other stuff. And next up, we have the Vault encounter. And unlike the rest of the encounters, there's really no boss fight here. So we're just using the Thorn as normal. And expectedly, it's great. Now, it's not too great against the knights in this encounter like it just won't do enough damage to those guys uh, to warrant using you're gonna have to switch to a special weapon to a heavy weapon or use a super but against everything else the acolytes the scions uh, even the phalanxes it's fantastic like it's really really just a good weapon in pve in fact using it for this challenge kind of made me realize just how good of a primary it is to run in normal pve engagements in strikes and so on it's just outputting so much damage for a primary weapon it's pretty insane but yeah, even with saying that, doesn't kill the knights fast enough, and so overall in this encounter, you know, it's decent, but not incredible. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Alright, now moving on from there, we have not the final encounter, but certainly the most climactic encounter against Riven. And let's be honest, no one wants to see slowly picking away at Riven over a huge period of time. Can the Thorn dps -er in the cheese threshold so you can go down and if you can do it as much damage as you can and you can get her health all the way down to that final 10th it just you know defeats her basically goes to the final encounter for one more mini dps phase a lot of weapons are capable of doing this the thunderlord even the edge transit like stuff like that you can reach this damage phase what about the thorn because in the rivet encounter there are a ton of ads, like honestly a ton of scions there, and those scions, if you don't kill them, they last all the way until she comes out. Heck, you can be doing this damage phase and there are scions still alive, meleeing you, being annoying, shooting you. And that means you can get Soul Devourer active for the majority, if not the entirety of this encounter. So our hopes were pretty high. And as you can see, they were dashed almost immediately. The Thorn does basically no damage to Riven, even with, even with the bonus. Now, why is that? Well, if you look closely, when you're hitting Riven, you actually don't do any damage over time. Seriously, the Thorn, for whatever reason, does not inflict DOT to Riven. So the majority of its extra DPS, the reason to use this weapon is completely stripped away in this encounter. There is no reason whatsoever to use the Thorn over your normal hand cannon. Like a, a normal hand cannon with Rampage would be doing pretty much the same thing as the Thorn in this instance. And that's pretty disappointing, and therefore the Thorn in this encounter gets, you know, a 3 out of 10. Below average, it's not getting any effect from its exotic ability, so you're giving up your exotic slot for nothing if you're planning a DPSing Riven. Now, for just shooting the adds, it's totally fine and still a great weapon, but I mean, like, it's not doing anything really special as opposed to other primary weapons. Your exotic is probably better spent on something else. And moving on from there, we do have technically one more encounter with Running Riven's Heart, but you, you basically aren't ever shooting your primary weapon. You're just chaining supers and stuff like that. Now, near the very end, if you are shooting, it's totally fine. But again, you're, it, this is all about chaining supers. Yeah, it's a totally fine weapon here. Let's just give it a 5 out of 10. It's average. No one cares about this. So... That is the Thorn versus the Last Wish Raid. Overall, a pretty interesting weapon. I was impressed that a primary was able to, you know, two-phase Kali, in a sense, uh, to, to reach the damage threshold against Shiro Chi, to do half damage against uh, Morgoth even, but it really fell apart against Riven. Really unfortunate that its perk wasn't activating there. And sometimes these raid bosses have those weird quirks where guns just don't do what they should be doing against them. And so I'm going to give the Thorn overall a 6 out of 10 in the Last Wish raid. Definitely above average, had its moments, and honestly worth using for certain encounters 
where a legendary, a special, or heavy will suffice for DPSing and other things, but not an absolute all-star. Guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.